And what we heard was a message delivered, uh, not a message, a package delivered by the tubing system to the secret room. If you remember, we saw a station there. So we should go there and get it. And uh, in, in first video comments, one guy said that it seems that I don't know what I'm doing and uh, that I sound too much surprised. But uh, yeah, so I will try to be more to the point. So, we came to the secret room and as you can see we have a container. Uh, in container we have a slide. And now what, what we need to do, if you remember in old times, so if you wanted to get pictures on paper from slides, you needed to use the light and all those machineries and stuff like that. So actually to um, see what's inside we need to uh, pass light through it. and. A projector actually does that so yeah in this room we have a pro projector and uh, we just put our slide in, in it and as you can see we now have schematics some sort of schematics they are for the switches and the ventilation system found in the room under the edge so there are four sections here and uh, if you remember when we entered the laboratory, uh, uh, our character said that it's, uh, he is not able to breathe and uh, the guy on the phone said something that we need to start the pumps uh, to flow air or something like that. So to be able to go in laboratory we are mostly interested on those two parts and what we do we take the car that we found uh, well early in the game and we try to put it here. It, does, it doesn't work, so we put it here. Now, as you can see, it's, some, it's like some sort of a template and not full actually because, well, it's just all. So we take our pencil and we draw a template. Actually, the chart, the door, the template. Okay, so we don't have any more pencil and we don't have any more adhesive tape, so it is used and will not be required anymore. And now what we have, we have an uh, actual template of uh, connections uh, connections of the switches in the room under the edge. So, okay, what we have that now, let's return and we will manage those switches. So, just enter through door, through hedge. Go to your box with switches and just put your template in here. Now, a few things here. Uh, if you remember, the guy over the phone said that we need to use duct 13 uh, to get the air. So, we first uh, manipulate this switch. Uh, to be on lift 13 because 13 is only one number and it's only here. Uh, so leave it as it is here. And now, if you remember, we saw some markings in the laboratory on pipe and it was saying 71B. So we switch it to 71B. And as you can see, if I switch here, the lights here blinks but there is no on 71V and if you remember I actually spoke about the check button earlier so if we press check we see that uh, it actually the lamp itself don't work so the switch could be that it is working in that position but we just don't get any indication but it doesn't mean that the switch is in that position so uh, check buttons are great for that and now what we only have to do is to connect from here to here and we don't need any extra lights because it will not work in our circuit so just from here to here and as we can see it goes now here it goes here and it's actually bad because we now have connection here which leads to 7 to and we could turn off uh, at 2, it, it doesn't show anymore and then it, this contact goes to here and it ends and the check shows that this light is working so it actually is not turned on then it ends. Uh, 
we don't have any possibility to switch that light on so when <clears throat> this is not good for us what is good for us now as you can see if I would go from ID4 I would go from here and to 71V and that's a good solution we need to have also ensure that any other lights is not uh, is not uh, well, shining so it must be in the upper position at three in lower position and every other uh, switch like that and we have a clear connection to 71V and ensure that it's on 71V as well okay now we are done here we just turn around and I'll just operate the switch as you can see section 71B is lit now and we can hear pumps same stuff is working let's try to call our guy again over turned on the air supply but something came through the pneumatic tube I need to check it out come back and we'll search for a way out of here together once again, we had uh, got a package to that same uh, secret room, and a guy said by phone that we should come back. So let's first go and check what we got. Well, actually, I know what we got, so, and I shouldn't be doing that because, well, it seems that I didn't play the game. <laughs> Was that stuff downstairs? And our hero is now sick from some sort of chemical. So let's take the package. It's a flash message. I think the message is same uh, from the guy which speaks over the lines, but maybe not. Well, it's in any case, it's not important. But we needed to trigger the story further. Let's go back to call. Uh, the guy and let's call our guy on the phone is everything okay hey where did you go you all right over over okay so he's gone and we are very sick and what we actually did we turned air to the laboratory so we should check it now And in this time you will not need to do everything fast because now the air is empty. <clears throat> so no rush, just that you are sick and probably dying. I know very well what's downstairs. I can feel it through the concrete and the metal. Now this flash message is quite an interesting one. It, it begins to freak you out. He is talking about that place uh, in the dark, which you cannot go in right now because you have no light, you won't see anything. And actually from now on the game gets a bit uh, scarier. Well, not like some Resident Evil stuff or that with zombies and stuff, but it's just uh, uh, mentally uh, challenging in some places. So our character is ill because of his, this chemical. Uh, which is unknown type of chemical and to cure him we need to know what it is and to prepare an ant now then uh, we can do it by grabbing some uh, I don't know how it's called in English but uh, devices that show uh, if uh, any of elements is uh, present just a moment yeah indicators okay <laughs> so uh, from the box we grab oh, indicators worse. and what was that stuff downstairs when the screen returns to normal or so one thing that we're interested in so here you can see some batteries for a flashlight okay and now we have light so just don't forget them because it's not very uh, it's not seen very good so also pick all the documents and particular this one is very interesting and needed actually because it is a user manual for acoustic signal generator and uh, it's uh, 
this signal generated is under the door and it is uh, one bit that we actually need uh, to finish the story and be sure to read it and to uh, know what switch uh, does what on the device and here's the syringe so take that as well okay so let's go back to spilled chemicals if I would remember where are they okay okay and now take all of your indicators and just dip it in the chemical uh, as you can see you will uh, get like used indicator and if they are actually like not used now and what can you see is that one has actual color and it's sarin indicator so that means that this is sarin chemical which I, f I think is not does not exist or maybe it's a compound <laughs> named sarin so uh, earlier in the game oh, we, we feeling worse what was that stuff downstairs we took a document with uh, some chemical descriptions and it was in the office called Chemical Warfare Agents and uh, what we can see if, uh, there that we have an entry named Saren and it, it, it describes what it does and the most important line is that atropine injected intravenously is used as an antidote so we need atropine to get better and we also early in the game got the document called invoice with uh, chemical purchase and we can see that we can see that anthropine was purchased as 110 milliliters uh, package let's call that and uh, these two documents is quite important because you know now what you need and you know well at least that this facility has it somewhere and it seems that these chemicals that they purchased are all here and yeah you are correct this one is anthropine because the, uh, the amount of uh, liquid in there is exactly 110 milliliters so just grab your syringe and prepare an antinode for you for yourself okay and now he, he should say that say that he is better <sighs> getting better the antidote helped my head's still reeling but my breath and pulse are normal okay so there's nothing more important that this room maybe I missed some documents that I probably had and you should Judging find the records some strange things are happening here it's so eerie It'd be better not to know why this bunker was built. You should collect them all and just read it because it will enhance uh, the story of this game for you. There's photos that you can click and so on. But I will not go into there because there is no stuff that is critical for story right now in here. Let's go back. And now that we have batteries, we. Uh, the hero already put in, uh, in our flashlight, we can go back to the dark. And I just want to inform you that I will in some time get freaky out there because there are some parts that actually scares me a bit. Uh, so just be prepared for that. Maybe, maybe not because it's like fifth or sixth time I also playing uh, in here. So. One thing cool here is now if you, I would try to go to here, our character becomes very scary and you cannot do anything else, you need to return. I don't understand what's happening to me. I can't move any further. My whole body seems paralyzed, my heart is thumping. I've never been so afraid before. Some unexplainable fear. Why can't I go there? Could these be the effects of the antidote? Nah, you're just losing it. Okay, so we enter the door, and in this place there will be a shadow that will pass by. So 